Perfect. Okay, welcome uh, to our virtual town hall. I'm Tim Little, superintendent here at Barrett IC. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about our upcoming bond on May the 7th. Uh, before I get into it, uh, we do have a presentation. If you have trouble reading the presentation on the screen, this will be posted on our website and also on our bond website, which is BarrettISDBond.com. Uh, that's also linked off of our website. So if you can't see the slides or want to go back and check when the slide's out, log in there afterwards. So this all is about the new values that are coming into our district. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows you see the wind towers going up um, all along the north side of I-20. Uh, 19 of those wind towers are in our current district or in, in Baird. Uh, we've got another project out in the Putnam area that's bringing some more wind turbines on. Um, and we've got two more projects, uh, another wind project and a solar project that are still in the planning stages, but uh, we're looking forward to those too. And the result of all this new value coming into our district is the chance for us to do some facilities improvement at basically no additional cost to our current taxpayers beyond what they're already paying. And we were gonna walk you through the process of how we got to this particular bond and what's in it. So uh, we started out uh, at the administrative level, just looking at everything. We've looked at our enrollment, our trends for our enrollment, uh, prospects for growth in the area. Uh, and we started looking at our needs. Uh, then we formed a, a facilities planning committee. Uh, we invited about 35 people from about the community, uh, all different sectors of the community, and brought them together for three meetings uh, with our architects and with our financial planners to talk about what the district needed. We started out with a tour of our facilities. Everybody got to look at the facilities, ask questions about it. Um, then we talked about uh, after that, what were the needs, prioritizing the needs, and then we started talking about the finances. Uh, a very, very important point in this particular bond is that very, very early on, the board made the commitment that we do not want to change our tax rate. We do not want to impose a higher tax burden on any of our uh, residents in Baird. So we were limited to calling a bond, not necessarily to meet every need we had, but to keep the tax rate flat and take advantage of the new values. Uh, the board called that bond election in the amount of $17 million. Um, after discussions with our financial experts, uh, it was determined that that was the biggest bond we could call and still hold to that do not raise that overall tax rate promise that the board had made. And of course, election day is May the 7th. Um, uh, as we start going forward, just let me add in, if you've got questions or comments, please post them in the chat. Uh, as they pop up, if I can answer them right away, I will answer them. Um, if they're a little more complicated, we will post the answers on the website and on the BairdISDBond.com website um, as, as part of the frequently asked questions. And we'll get that up as quickly as we can. So the recommendation to the board after looking at, at many, many needs, uh, the top two needs identified by our committee were a new gym and weight room, um, which would include uh, offices for the uh, AD and some of our coaches. Uh, and of course, it would include new concessions, uh, locker rooms, et cetera, all the things you'd normally have with a gym. Uh, the other one, and I'm going to call these 1A and 1B because these were by far the top two priorities our committee came up with. Uh, the other one was a, a new ag facility. Um, now, we're going to distinguish that the, we are currently building a new welding facility. Uh, in fact, that's going to be completed next month. Uh, that was built entirely by the board out of fund balance. Uh, and it cost a total of about, well, about $3.25 million to build the building. And then we got grants for about half a million to equip it. And when it's all finished, it's going to total just under $4 million. Um, and realize that was the result of more than a decade of the board working to build fund balance. It took them about a decade to build up enough fund balance to do about a three and a half million dollar project. Uh, but the second project was the new ag facility. Uh, that will be uh, some ag classrooms. Um, it will have show, uh, show arena. It'll have animal pens. It's really focused on supporting 
um, our animal programs and really building those programs. That was a, a need really expressed by the community and a desire to be able to do more animals, have more shows, get more kids involved in that particular program. And this particular uh, facility will support that. Uh, the other big thing that came up was access control and security around our campuses. Uh, so that's going to include some new fences, some new access controls at the doors, uh, more cameras, uh, some other technological enhancements, uh, and just generally making the school a safer place for our kids. So let's talk a little bit about how schools are funded. Uh, one question that has been asked to me, not, not in this chat, I haven't seen the chat yet, but one question I have been asked a couple of times is, why do we need to pass a bond? Why can't we just do this out of our budget? So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that. Um, school budgets are broken into two pieces. There's what we call the maintenance and operations piece. And that is the budget that we use to fund our ongoing day-to-day -day operations. Right now, the district has an MO budget of about $4 million, a little over four, about $4.2 million. That is made up of about $3 million in local tax money and about a million dollars in money from Austin through our uh, foundation school program. Now, of that $4 million, about $3.2 million of it goes to salaries for our staff. We employ about uh, a little over 70 people, and the total salary for all those people combined is about $3.2 million. So that leaves us about $800,000 to do everything else. That's purchase computers. That's purchase books. Uh, part of it goes to feeding our students, uh, paying the electric bills, the water bills, the gas bills, general maintenance on the buildings, and everything else the school has to do to keep running. And we do that with about $800,000 a year. Uh, it doesn't leave a lot extra. Um, in a, a really good year right now, we would be able to put away about two hundred thousand a year. Um, it, getting up to seventeen million at two hundred thousand a year takes about eighty-five years, so that's not going to happen quickly. So, <clears throat> the and, and we're really limited in that. <clears throat> when these new values come in, we're going to raise more than three million dollars in taxes. But because of the recapture program that the state of Texas runs, we're still only going to be able to keep about $3 million, and we're going to have to send the rest to Austin, where it will be distributed to other schools through um, what a lot of people call their Robin Hood plan. Uh, <clears throat> so the extra taxes on this side are not going to help us at all, the extra values. I said extra taxes, I meant extra values. <clears throat> uh, the tax rate's the same when the values go up. And that's why we signed the value limitation agreements. Uh, with the wind farms, uh, by limiting them on the maintenance side, we don't have to send as much extra money to Austin through recapture. Uh, that keeps our tax dollars here. Now, those agreements do not apply on what's called the interest in sinking, and that's our bond side. The only way that we can levy taxes on this side is through a bond election, and that's what we've called here. Uh, we're asking the citizens of Baird and our district to give us permission to sell bonds and then pay them through the interest and in sinking fund, or we'll just call that the bond side for now. The agreements that we have with these energy companies do not affect how much we can tax on this side. We can tax the full value. And we're going to see our values over the next couple of years double or even triple uh, over what they are right now, which means potentially a whole lot of new money on the bond side without changing the tax rate, exactly the same tax rate. And where we get $1 now, we get $3 if we pass a bond. So that's why we're looking at a bond to do these renovations and start improving our school district. Do we have any questions yet? We have no questions. Yet. Again, ask those questions and I'll be happy to answer them. So what do we mean by tax rate? Well, you can see that over the last uh, six years, since 2017-18, back in 2017-18, our total tax rate was $1.38, and that's per $100 evaluation on a home or on any piece of property in the district. From 2017 to 2021, it dropped every year. We went to $1.36, $1.25, and now $1.20. And 
we are pretty much stuck at $1.20 right now. And after passing this bond, we'll still be at $1.20. So the school will not change our tax rate based on this bond passing or not passing. Whether the bond passes or does not pass, our tax rate this year is still going to be $1.20. And here you can see graphically the same thing. Uh, the black bars represent our maintenance tax rate and the red bars represent our INS tax rate. And again, if we're still taxing at the same rate, how do we have the extra money to build these buildings, do this bond? Again, that's because the extra value from the wind farms, all the extra money is coming in from taxing the wind farms and down the road, possibly a solar farm. Um, I will mention this at this point. Um, this bond only considers those first two wind farms, uh, the Mesquite Sky and the Ranchland projects. The other projects down the road have not been counted because they're not operational yet. We don't count potential future tax revenues until we actually see windmill blades spinning, we actually see electricity being produced, and it's a tangible asset and we know it's going to be there. So this bond is not on any kind of speculation, well, maybe these other projects will happen in a year or two. If these other projects do happen in a year or two, that just means even more money, which could mean more improvements or a lower tax rate at that point. <clears throat> okay, so this is a big one. And a lot of people have asked me about this. We are not expecting a total tax rate increase. So when you look at your ballot, and if you wanna see what the ballot looks like, there's a sample ballot on our website. And I'm gonna talk off camera, Brian, do you know if there's one on the Baird ISD bond, do they have a sample ballot yet? I'm, I'm seeing an affirmative. So you can see it on either one of those websites to see what the ballot looks like. You are going to see in big letters, this is a property tax increase, but I just told you it wasn't. Let's be really clear on the terminology here. This is authorizing the district to take on additional debt. So yes, we will owe more debt, but we will have the wind resources to pay down that debt, resources we don't have right now. We are not changing the tax rate, which means your personal tax rate that you pay on your home is not going to go up because of anything done by the school district. Now, if your values were increased because the appraisal district valued your house at a higher value or because of something the county had done or some other organization that could levy taxes, you might see your taxes increase, but no tax increase in the total amount you pay based on this bond. Definitely an increase in debt, not an increase in rate. So no new tax rate increase. The rate stays flat. And we'll post uh, some more description that it's explained a little bit on those websites. And if you have any questions about that, again, please uh, post those in the comments or shoot me an email at the school and we'll get them out and answer everybody's questions on that. The reason we have to do this is because the Texas legislature back in 2019 put this requirement in. Any bond proposition in the state of Texas right now has to say this is a property tax increase, no matter what the specifics of that bond is. That's now a requirement. And so it has to be on the ballot that way. Next slide. So voting, uh, this is coming up very soon. We're already past the deadline to register to vote. So if you haven't registered, I'm sorry, it's, it's too late to do that. Um, early voting starts on April 25th, so that's in about 10 days. Uh, and it runs through May the 3rd, and then the election day is on May the 7th. And, and as always, we encourage everyone to vote, uh, regardless of how you vote. Uh, it's your duty as a citizen to vote, so please be out and vote. Uh, we will also have a live version, and, and we apologize. We had planned to have two town halls, one tonight and one next Thursday. Unfortunately, the district track meet is today, and we knew that a lot of our parents and a lot of our teachers and staff would be at the district track meet. I wish I were at the district track meet. Uh, so we decided to do this virtually. Uh, we'll take this recording. Uh, we'll make the recording available to you so you can see what we talked about. Again, if you have questions, you can send them to me or post them out there. Uh, but we will have an in-face meeting next Thursday on April 21st. That's going to be from 6 to 7, and it's going to be in the Barrett High School Auditorium. 
So if you have questions and you want to hold my feet to the fire, put me on the spot, uh, really grill me hard, uh, I will be there uh, to answer any questions you got the best I can. And I'll ask once again, do we have any questions? And we have no questions. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up then. I hope this was of value to you. And again, if you have questions, go to our district website. Uh, go to BairdISDBond.com. Or you can email me directly and we'll answer those questions. And if you email me a question, I'll, I'll respond to you. But we'll also take your question. We'll put it on our FAQ so we can answer for everybody that might have the same question. Hope everybody has a great night. Uh, and we'll see you next week, I hope.